Hi, this is Steve Adubato coming to you remotely. In this particular uh, program, we focus largely on the second congressional district and the race there, uh, a race that's important in New Jersey and nationally. We kick off the program with United States Congressman Jeff Van Drew, who represents the second district. Good to see you, Congressman. It's great to see you as well. Right after this, we'll be joined by uh, the Congressman's Democratic opponent, Amy Kennedy. Congressman, let me ask you this. We'll try to stay on the issues, on policy, on COVID. Where has President Trump, whom you support um, down the line, where has he done well? Where has he fallen short on COVID as, as a leader? Well, I think he certainly has done well in that he has pointed out, you know, from the very beginning, he was concerned that, you know, we needed to have a travel ban. And if you remember when he first instituted the travel ban, when we started to hear all the news of COVID, he was very much criticized almost as being a racist because he was having a travel ban out of China. It proved to be the right thing. And that was the beginning, I believe, of the president doing an awful lot of what is right. I mean, he was able to make sure we had enough respirators. Uh, you know, nobody is prepared or nobody in recent history has ever been prepared for the type of event that occurred, yet we were able to get PPE together, we were able to help our businesses, we were able to financially make sure that you know these businesses and that individual people through extended unemployment, businesses through PPP were uh, you know, taken care of to some degree. Far from perfect and dependent upon each individual governor. So there's a lot that our governor has done here in New Jersey that I don't think has been good. We're the only state that didn't actually break out the way that we opened up the state. Even New York State, things were allowed in Northern uh, New York that weren't allowed in the city, which made sense. Yet in New Jersey, everything was done with a broad brush. And so, you know, I've disagreed with the governor on the way that he's gone about that. Our store businesses have been hurt because of that. And that's more of a state issue and a gubernatorial issue. I think the president's done well. He's been involved. He's been involved literally just about every day. He's ensured that, you know, the dollars would be there where they were needed. And I think that at the end of the day, um, you know, God willing, when we come out of this thing, we'll look at this and know that we learned a lot and that there's a lot more to learn about a pandemic as well. Congressman, let me, let me follow up. Um, United States has more than a quarter of all of the deaths, all of the cases in the world. Um, I appreciate your explanation of where the president has done well, but I ask where we've fallen short. The United States has suffered more than virtually every other uh, industrialized nation. Where has the president fallen short? Because the, a significant number of New Jerseyans and Americans believe he has. I'm not talking politics. I'm talking execution, leadership, and policy. Where are we falling short? I don't think that we have fallen that short, and, and that's why I'm trying to be clear here. Um, there are individual governors who dealt with the situation in different ways, and it is the nature of our country that we always allow, obviously, individual states to have states' rights. So, some In a global pandemic? Did, of course, it's, it, it has been allowed always, and I think most governors would want that. So uh, I think the governor of New Jersey would argue that he should have some authority in a some. global pandemic on what happens in New Jersey. I don't necessarily agree with that or agree with what he did. Some, absolutely. Uh, I think the other problem has been that there's been a lot of politics around this, even uh, in Washington, where we needed to get things done. And there were some folks, and I would argue, quite frankly, on the other side, that were too busy playing politics, trying to make you the know, other side, the, the other good. side, meaning the side you used to play for. Yes, correct. OK, exactly right. The Democrats. Yeah. Everybody learns in life. Everybody gets too much. You, you, you said your party left you. You didn't leave the party. I'm sorry for interrupting. Correct. What did you mean by that, Congressman? The party changed radically. I started out as a councilman, and I always, even in council, I said to the folks that asked me to do it, I am a moderate to a conservative individual. Do you really think the Democratic Party is the place for me? And at that time, they said that they did, and it was a big tent. As time has gone along, 
more and more and more the party, in my opinion, the Democratic Party is not the big tent. The Democratic Party has changed. It has become very far to the left, in many ways very socialist, and in many ways even Marxist. So I think the party. Whoa, socialist work. and Marxist? So Kamala Harris, the former attorney general in California, perceived by many on the left to be too moderate and too tough on crime when she held that position. Joe Biden never called far left, criticized by many for not being progressive enough. You believe that that ticket is too far left? I didn't say that. I didn't say the I'm, ticket. I'm asking. I, didn't, I didn't talk about the ticket. Yes, the things that they will do at the end of the day, when you speak about demeaning or diminishing the police, when you talk about defunding police, which my opponent has, yes, I think it is. Uh, I think they are in the uh, Green New Deal. Absolutely, I do. I think they do when they don't stand up and say what is happening uh, in our cities and in our urban areas is wrong. Not only those Democrats, but those Democratic mayors that aren't willing to stand up and say, no, you can't throw Molotov cocktails. No, you cannot destroy buildings, federal or otherwise. No, you cannot uh, create that kind of harm to our police force or to actually uh, the property uh, that belongs to the taxpayers of the United States of America. You think Amy Kennedy, your Democratic opponent, supports the things you just described, the destroying of property? And you think she supports those things? I, I don't know that she would say when she supports them, but what she has said about police, which is why in her hometown, her very hometown, uh, I have gotten the support of the police there and the endorsement, Je right in her town, as well as I expect to get the support and endorsement uh, of both the uh, PBA and the FOP as well. There's a reason, and it's because of what she said. What she said will lead to the things I speak about. Real quick, quick follow-up. I asked her this question. I'm going to ask you, uh, even though your interview will air first. If you had to, on a scale from one to 10, uh, Kamala Harris as a leader, potential vice president, what would you give her, one to 10? As a, I, have, I guess a one, I don't know. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't think it's what the United States needs right now. And you know what, in the primary, Pete, Democrats felt she wasn't what was needed. When she spoke about Joe Biden, she spoke about him in ways that were very unpleasant. Sure. She led us to believe that in some ways he was in, uh, racist or, or at the least prejudicial in, in a lot of what he did and the laws that he passed. And there are many on the far left that felt that she was as well in some of the things that she did as uh, a prosecutor and an attorney general. So they both said things that were very serious about each other. And even but though that, that- Excuse me, doesn't that say something about him that he picked someone who challenged him and said terrible things about him if he thinks that she would be a good leader. Isn't that a good leadership quality? I, I don't know. I think a good leadership quality is when people can disagree with each other, but they can disagree with each other in a way that is full of intellect and is full of respect. And the remarks that were made, quite frankly, during that debate, I don't think represent that. And I, I think it's amazing that he did pick her because she said things that basically led us all to believe that he was unfit to be the president of the United States. Can I get a yes or no on this? I really re respect what you just said about civil discourse and being respectful to each other. Do you think President Trump has conducted himself in that way as a leader that he has been on the issues on the merits without the name calling and, and personal attacks? Just yes Some or no? Sometimes, no, I'm not going to say, I, I don't never do the yes. Has he no. engaged in name calling but and personal attacks? Sure. The president is very outspoken. You never have, you never have, Congressman, and you didn't as a state senator. That is correct. But he also, I think, captured a great deal of what so many Americans have been thinking and feeling. They are thinking and feeling that their government no longer is representing them, no longer representing a group of people that are just hardworking, average folks that need to be paid attention to. He captured that, and he captured it in a way that was very blunt. I would say that the president of, of our United States at times can be very blunt. Congressman, I want to thank you so much for joining us. So we wish you and your family all the best, particularly in these challenging times. Thank you, Congressman. I thank you, and I thank you for the opportunity. You got it. I'm Steve Adubato. I'll be right back.
Think Tank with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation. Funding has been provided by Holy Name Medical Center, the New Jersey Education Association, Gibbons PC, Operating Engineers, Local 825, NJM Insurance Group, Wells Fargo, the Russell Berry Foundation, Johnson & Johnson, NJ Best, New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. And by these public-spirited organizations, individuals, and associations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State. And by Employers Association of New Jersey. Promotional support provided by Insider NJ. And by New Jersey Globe. In the fabric of America, they are the toughest threads. One of the first things they learned was the code that every service member lives by. Leave no one behind. Now all of us need to live by it too, because some veterans are being left behind. 20 of them take their own lives every day. Learn how to be there for a veteran at betherefoveterans.com. Honor the code. Be there. Leave no one behind.